Hello everyone, Mr. Ford here. Uh, we're going to go over worksheet three of your force diagrams packet, which is quantitative force diagrams, which means we're going to add numbers into the mix. So it's basically incorporating all of the vector components that we've been doing along with um, just calculating gra uh, weights of objects forced due to gravity and putting them into our scenarios. So here we go. In number one, we have a sphere hanging on a cable, um, and we're going to calculate the forces on the sphere. So the first step is we circle our object of focus, and that's going to be our dot in our force diagram. So we definitely have force, diag force due to gravity acting on the sphere, and then tension force acting upward, which is going to be equal to that force down. So something we've done before. So now to add in the, the values, the quantitative aspect of it. So we've been introduced before to weight or force due to gravity, Fg equals mg. So if it's a five kilogram mass and acceleration due to gravity, I'm gonna do 10 for ease of math here. Our weight of our object is 50 newtons. So that means our force of tension is 50 newtons. Pretty easy so far, right? Time to make it more complicated. So in the second scenario on the right, we now have two cables acting on our object. So whether you kind of see that or the trick is to circle the object of focus, and anything that your, your circle goes through is obviously interacting with our object. So it's two cables here. So we're going to have to have two forces going up. So we already indicated that there's 50 newtons of force going down. And each cable, since it's going parallel and upward, is going to split that force in half. They're going to share that weight. And instead of writing force tension and force tension, in the future we might have force of, forces of tension that are not equal. So we're going to say, or try and get into the habit of saying force tension one and force tension two. So there's no equality marks because nothing is equal. Actually, we can put actually two equal ones here. Because each force tension up is going to split that 50 newtons into 25 each. So not too bad. So let's try to complicate the scenario. So in question two, we now have two spheres and two cables. So that we know which cable in which sphere we're talking about, I'm going to say cable A and cable B. And we're going to start with cable B because that's a little bit more simple. So cable B is supporting just the four kilogram mass. So we're gonna say force into gravity from the four kilogram mass. Has 40 Newtons downward. So that means cable B, and so that since there's, since there's two cables, I'm gonna say force tension from cable B is going to be equal to that downward force because we know it's not moving, or better yet, it's not accelerating, is also going to be equal to 40 newtons. So then when we look at cable A or that top mass, it's supporting both of those spheres. So we can kind of define that as a bigger system. supporting both the five kilogram and four kilogram mass, which is gonna be a larger weight. And since nothing is moving, AKA accelerating, all the forces are going to be equal. And that's gonna be force tension A, which is from the mo masses of both five and four kilograms, which equals nine.
or 90 newtons downward. And you may have noticed that I have not been identifying positive or negative. That's, since, that's because I'm adding arrows or vectors. Um, but you may want to get into a habit of writing positive and negative so that when you transpose those into equations, you don't forget to add those signs because signs, the equations do not have arrows in them, but they do have signs. All right, number three, increasing the level of difficulty here. So um, here we don't have forces in the horizontal or vertical. We have a force in the at an angle, 55 degrees. So that means we have to break those for that force up into horizontal and vertical components. So this question isn't very specific, whether it's the upward force on the fishing line or the downward force. I'm going to envision it like this, where we have our fish here. And we're trying to catch a fish, so we're pulling up. So we're going to have an upward force of 38 newtons. And we're going to call that a tension force. And we're going to break that up into horizontal and vertical components, being force of tension in the y, force of tension in the x. We have an angle. So nothing too new. We've done this before with velocity vectors and displacement vectors. So the only difference is now we're going to call them a force vector and have units of newtons, because that's the unit for force. So I don't feel a need to continue with that. If you need some more instruction, feel free to take a look in Schoology and see the solutions there. Question four is a little bit more complicated. It's, it's pretty uh, vague since they have two pictures here. One is kind of like a cable just pulling on this anchor, which is, looks like a big block. The other one looks like it's an anchor submerged in some sand or dirt, which there's some different scenarios there because we can't see what is below the dirt. So the solution I'm going to go through might be a little bit different from what you see in Schoology. I'm going to go with this first scenario here. So just like a box that we're attaching a rope to or a cable to. So if that's a scenario, here's our anchor. And we have gravity acting down. normal force acting upward, which is not going to be equal to gravity because we're going to have a component from the, uh, the cable force, the component of our cable force, which is acting up and to the left. So we're going to call that tension. And a portion of that tension force is going to be going to the left, so we need something to go to the right, and that's going to be friction. So the force that's not in the horizontal or the vertical is our tension force. So we're going to break that up into components. Now that... Now, now is when the notation gets a little bit more confusing. Instead of force tension, force normal, force whatever, uh, we're going to break it into x and y. So we have force tension in the y direction and force tension in the x direction. So we do have a bridge here where nothing is moving. So we have to see what is equal. So we have two upward forces and one downward force. So the one downward force would be equal to those two upward forces. So no equivalency marks there. But in the horizontal direction, we do have simply just two forces. The force of tension in the X and the force of friction. So they would need to be equal to each other because they're not gonna, nothing is moving here, it's a bridge. And I forgot to add our angle here. So we do have a 20 degree angle. And we're also told that the tension force in the cable is 15,000 newtons. So from what we've done in the past two units, if we have one side and an angle, and it's a right triangle, we can find any of the sides. 
Um, so you're going to use sine of 20 to get FTY. And you're going to go cosine of 20 to get FTX. And of course, you have to incorporate that 15,000 newtons, but I'm going to leave that to you to figure out or use Schoology to help guide you. So I'm going to skip a couple problems here. Actually, one, and look at, at the elephant. So a little bit different from what we've seen before. Um, in this video, we have a uh, scenario where the surface is tilted. We have an incline. So the rule for that is that we're going to have to break up gravity and redefine our x and y axes. So we have force due to gravity on the elephant. We have normal force acting on elephant because we do have a surface here. So there's a force supporting in that direction. And a force preventing the elephant from sliding down the, slant, the incline. which is friction. So at this point, we would, you know, before we would say, let's break up friction and normal. And the ups equal the downs, the lefts equal the rights. But that wouldn't explain why the elephant might slide down the incline or actually accelerate if it was walking or walk up if it was walking backwards up the incline. That's the potential direction of motion. So we need to sum the forces in those directions. So when we have an incline, we're going to redefine our axes, meaning, in this case, tilt our head to the right or tilt our paper to the left. So this is my now new y-axis and axis and x-axis. So it's like we've been doing before. So the only force that's not in our x or y is gravity. So that's the one we're going to break up into f, g, y, and f, g, x. So at this point, the elephant is not moving. So the forces in the x and y need to be balanced. So that means normal force is going to equal gravity in the x, or I'm sorry, y direction. And I don't know why I didn't label that. That's force of friction. Force of friction is going to equal fg in the x direction. But this is a quantitative worksheet, so we need to put in numbers. So we're given the fact that we're given the, the mass of the elephant is 2,000 kilograms here. So we do know an equation for weight of the elephant or F force due to gravity. So if that's 2,000 kilograms and we use 10 for easy math, the force due to gravity on the elephant, the earth is pulling down 20 newtons. So that means our hypotenuse of our triangle is 20,000 newtons. All right, so we have a side, and we're asked to find the components. So we need to know an angle to be able to use trig functions. So the trick is, this is the angle 20 degrees with the horizontal. As long as you draw... Your y component here in the same plane as the normal force or your y direction. If you do that every time, your angle with the horizontal in your picture or your problem is going to be close to the dot, not that far angle over here. Because we can draw either triangle. They're similar triangles. But when you do that, the angle changes. So whether you use sine or cosine will change. So like with anything in life, you want to be consistent. So like I said, if you don't want to start doing some geometry and all those little proofs, 
which if you have questions about, you wouldn't actually know what, why that's 20 degrees, feel free to ask me next class um, and I, I can walk, walk through that with you. So when you break up gravity, as long as you make your y component in the same plane or on the opposite side, right, reverse side, as normal force, that angle with the horizontal is going to be close to your, your dot, or in this case, the top of the triangle. So at this point, we know the hypotenuse. We know an angle. So using sine and cosine, you can figure out the components. So just like last time, or last problem, if you need help with that, uh, refer back to your solutions and or ask me next class. All right, so number seven, I'm going to walk full through, walk through fully, um, just so you're, you have a model for the next problem. So we have Tarzan here. We're drawing a force diagram for Tarzan. And we definitely know that there's gravity. And his loincloth, aka underwear, is stuck on the tree, on the branch there. So we have gravity. And we're going to have a tension force, because it's kind of something flexible. And we have another tension force from the vine. So do to dif differentiate between those tension forces, we're going to call it force tension from V, the vine, and L from the loin. Feel free to spell out loin and vine if needed. So those are the three real forces. So we don't have an incline here, so we're not going to break up gravity, but we're going to break up uh, force tension from the vine. I'm just going to move that over here for clarity here. There we go. And we're going to have force, whoops, force tension in the x direction and force tension in the y direction for the vine. And we also know an angle here. We can see that that's clearly 40 degrees here. And since Tarzan is kind of stuck, we need to show why. So force tension L and force tension X will be equal. And force tension Y. Oops, sorry. We need to label these a little bit better. Force tension from the vine in the Y direction. Force tension from the vine in the X direction. So we got force tension in the y direction is equal to force due to gravity. And most of the physics is over. The rest of it is stuff that we've already done in previous units. So question B is asking us to write an equation for the vertical forces. So um, I'm going to go a little bit advanced here into Newton's second law and saying sum of the forces. That's what that sigma means or net force equals mass times acceleration. So the forces in the vertical are going to be force due to gravity. I always tend to write what I drew first, and force due to gravity is down, so I need to indicate that force is down. Plus, and it's plus because it's sum of the forces, the only other one that's going up or down is force tension from the vine in the y direction. I don't know the mass yet. In part, in part D, we do know the mass, but at this point in the problem, we don't know it. But we do know that Tarzan is not accelerating, so that whole term here turns to zero. So that means those two forces that we just listed need to equal each other. So another way to simply put it, if you look at your force diagram, is force tension from the vine in the y direction equals 
force due to gravity, and we would see that algebraically if we move this to the other side of the equation. And very similarly, we're going to do that same thing in the horizontal direction. So some of the forces in the horizontal direction equal mass times acceleration. I'm stating that because that is our general physics equation. And in this case, we have FTV in the X because that's negative. I try and keep consistent with putting my negative first. You can do otherwise, but I like to have that plus sign for the sum. Plus force tension L from the loincloth equals zero because it's not accelerating, which is basically saying FTL equals FTVX. Part D, what does he weigh? FG equals MG. So if he's 75 kilograms, and we round 9.8 to 10 for easy math. He is 750 newtons downward. Now we're going to calculate actual forces. So we need to calculate for part E the tension in the vine. So the tension in the vine is the hypotenuse. So we already know that, so sometimes it's helpful to go back in and let's pick the color that will stick out. FG is 750 newtons down. That means FTVY is 750. So we have a side. And we have an angle. That means we can find out other two sides of the triangle. So... I'm looking for FTV, which is adjacent to my 40. I'm sorry. Um, the FTV that I have circled here, FTVY, is adjacent to my 40, so I'm going to use cosine. Cosine 40 degrees is adjacent. The adjacent side is my 750 over my hypotenuse, which is the actual tension in the vine which I'm looking for. So I plug that into a calculator. And I get 979 newtons, which is bigger than the other force. Does that make sense? Yes, because it's a hypotenuse. The hypotenuse should be bigger than each individual component. So now I need to find in part F the tension in the loincloth. So I know tension in the loincloth is equal to tension from the vine in the x direction. So these two here are equal. So I just need to find out this side where I already know the other two sides. So I can use Pythagorean theorem because I already know 750 and I just calculated the hypotenuse side. Um, so that's an option. Uh, you can use tangent because you have an angle and a side to find the other side. But I'm a little stickler. If I use cosine, I like to use sine. If I use sine, I use like cosine. So I'm going to use 40 and my hypotenuse that I just found to find my opposite side, FTVX. So I'm going to go sine. 40 degrees. My opposite side was my FTVX over the hypotenuse, which was 979 newtons. Put it right that way. Plug that into my calculator. And I get FTVX equals 629 newtons. Now, if you look in Schoology, they might use different sine and cosine in different angles. I think they actually go and say, well, we're going to stick with this other angle. So if this is 40, this is 50. And then the trig changes a little bit. So there's some options.
but we've been doing this for a little bit, so you should be comfortable. For eight, um, I'm going to say go ahead and do it on your own. If you need help, to first take a look at the force diagram listed in Schoology and the solutions, and then see if you can use number seven as a model to continue. Um, so go ahead and finish the rest of the worksheet that we did not complete. Check Schoology for solutions, and if you still have questions, please make note of that to ask in class the next time we meet. Have a great day.